dinosaur. Back in the water, the shovel bites off hefty portions of sand, mud, and rock. Up to 70,000 cubic feet with every scoop. But before it gets down to pay dirt, it has to push against the pressure of 50 feet of seawater. When one patch is scraped to the bare bottom, it's time for the boisseau to move on. Not with a tow rope or tugboat, but with its own legs. It's a three-legged giant that literally walks itself from one job site to the next. Its 10-ton legs are called spuds. Thomas White mans the controls. This dredge is a, it's, it's a um, self-propelling dredge. So what we do is we have three spuds. You have a port spud, a starboard spud, and a stern spud. And what will happen is the port and starboard spuds will lift out of the water with hydraulic cylinders helping to, to lift them. The stern spud will also lift out of the water, but what that one will do is it will then articulate. It will push, it will actually turn either fore or aft, depending if you want the dredge to go forward or backwards. So what will happen is the stern spud will lift out, it will tilt backwards if we want to push the dredge forward, go back into the bottom of the river, and then rotate, thus pushing the dredge forward. And again, you can do that in reverse if you want to go backwards. If you'll follow me, I'll show you the control room for the hydraulic spuds. This is the heart of the hydraulics that operate spuds. The spuds can lift between 95 and 100 tons single line pull, so each spud is capable of doing that. So all three of them together can lift about 300 tons. The main power to these lines actually comes off the lee bear itself, the engine room from the lee bear, and the hydraulics on the lee bear. What we have though in the event of an emergency where the lee bear is down for whatever reason and we have to pick spuds up, we have a hydraulic power unit which we will be able to put online and immediately be able to raise spuds. So it's a redundant system, but it's a fail-safe in the event that we need to move, because when you're operating in an active channel, you always have to have the ability to move at all times. When the huge machine is successfully repositioned, it resumes its work, scouring, scraping, and scooping. It's a job that will never be finished as long as big ships sail the sea. From the hard rock bottom of the Big Apple to the soaring spruces of British Columbia, there are dozens of high tonnage tasks to be taken on. A never-ending assignment for the supersized scrapers, suckers, diggers, and dump trucks of the sea. Keeping our rivers clear, our harbors humming, and the world's maritime nations afloat thanks to today's most powerful marine machines.